let's get right into it. To prepare our Dunning run, we first of all need to create a new business partner via transaction code BP. Let's click on organization and then we select the grouping first and we store some dummy data. By the way, if you want to find out more about the business partner, I will leave you a whole playlist of mine in the description of this video. Let's just say test, then we need to store the address information. This information is already important because it will be printed later on on the Dunning notice. Also further down, you can see the communication data. So the communication language is particularly important because this is also the language in which the Dunning notice will be printed later on. If there is no language maintained over here, then the Dunning program will take the language of the associated company code. For now, this is fine. We can save and you can see the business partner was created. Let's go into the change mode again. And now we select the business partner role called FI customer, this one over here. Then we navigate to the company code. In my system, this is already pre-filled. In your system, you click on company codes, create, insert your company code, and then select customer over here and click on adapt. Now we need to fill at least the reconciliation account. And then we go into the customer payments transaction tab because over here we need to state our terms of payment. Let me choose those terms of payment over here. Click on enter. This field is of utmost importance already because based on this field, the system will calculate when the payment is due. As you can see, pay immediately without deduction. And this will also determine amongst others when an open item is overdue. So meaning that once we bill our customer, some days have to pass before we can even done the customer. And this depends amongst others on the terms of payment. I will explain you the other fields in a second. Now we go to the customer correspondence tab. And over here, we need to provide a Dunning procedure. So my Dunning procedure is called 0001. And as you can see, four level Dunning notice every two weeks. This means that if an open item for our customer is overdue and we execute a Dunning run, then this open item will be done the first time with a certain fee. After two weeks, if it's still due, it will be done a second time with another fee and so on up until four times. Over here, you can see a Dunning block. This would mean that if we set this indicator over here, then the customer or our business partner to be precise won't be done even though items of this business partner might be overdue. The next indicator called Dunning recipient, we only set if we want the Dunning notice to be sent to a deviating business partner. So let's say our business partner is a huge company we are interacting with. We want to done one of the subsidiaries, but the customer told us that if we done him, then we need to send the Dunning notice to the headquarter. So here we could insert another business partner to be precise. Last Dunning notice, this will be filled by the system automatically. So the system will store here the last date on which a Dunning notice was sent to this customer. Legal Dunning procedure, here the system would insert a date on which the last legal Dunning procedure was conducted. So the legal Dunning procedure would be something like if this open item of the customer is overdue for a long, long, long time and we have sent many reminders and many Dunning notices, but the customer still does not react, then this could turn into a legal process and the date of the legal process will be inserted over here. Then you can see the Dunning level. This is also set by the system. So as I told you, if we done the first time, then a one is set over here. If we done the second time with two and so on. The Dunning clerk is also important. This will be the person responsible for the Dunning notice on our side. So I will just insert CP over here. So this normally is a person. And if there is nothing set over here, then the system will take the entrance from the correspondence accounting clerk over here. So these data. And this will also be printed later on on the Dunning notice. Okay, the grouping key can be used if we want several open items of our customer to be grouped together in one Dunning notice. So meaning that normally we done our customer per open item. However, with this group key, we could say that if there are five overdue items of our customer, then we will send one Dunning notice comprising all the five open items. And the system identifies open items that should be done together via this grouping key if necessary. For now, this is fine. Okay, that's basically it. Now let's click on save. You can see changes have been saved. So far for the master data, now we can create a customer invoice to create our open item for the Dunning notice. So we take this number over here, our customer number, and then we go to slash n fp70. Over here, we insert our customer number. And now we will set the invoice date 
to a date in the past so that we are artificially stating now that the item will be overdue. You can see invoice date last month, posting date. Now before we fill any other fields, it's time to explain you briefly how the system will determine whether an open item is doneable or not. So as you have seen before, let me just go to slash OBP again for a second. Let's open our business partner and in the finance role for the customer, we have filled the Dunning procedure. So you can see here the determination of Dunnable accounts. First, the Dunning program checks the accounts, so our business partner, and then the items. So for the business partner, it checks the Dunning procedure, in our case 0001, and also it checks here the last Dunning notice, but this is filled by the system, okay? And then it also checks whether a Dunning block was set or not. This is for the master data, so far so good. If we go now back to our customer invoice, let me just insert here the amount, calculate tax and the tax rate. You can see a warning message, let's just hit on enter. And this you can now see over here. The open item is overdue according to the issue date, the base date, the terms of payments and grace date. So the issue date is already in the past. Also the base date, as you can see here, baseline date is set to last month and the payment terms here are determined via this baseline date set over here. Also the baseline date could derive from other values as I have explained to you in another video. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. It's about the payment terms. The gray states you can't see over here. The gray states are set in the customizing of the Dunning notice. Also the system now checks here whether the open item is blocked for Dunning notices. This we can check via the button details. And here you can see no Dunning block has been set. I could set it here manually, then the open item won't be due to Dunning. However, we will leave it as is for now. Okay, so far so good. So we have learned that we need to store particular data in our business partner master and the Dunning program checks the Dunning procedure and if there's any Dunning block set and also on the item level over here, when creating the customer invoice, it checks if the item is overdue according to the issue date, our baseline date, the terms of payments and grace dates, and also whether we set a Dunning block over here. Let's now finalize our invoice. So here on the line item data, I select an account, an amount as well, and then an account assignment. Let me just choose cost center, even though an internal order or sales order would be better. You can see here the balance is zero, so we can post. The document has now been posted. By now we created the business partner master and also the customer invoice. Let's now go to the Dunning run via transaction code slash NF150. Over here it's the same as with the payment run I have already shown you in a bunch of other videos. I will leave them in the description of this one as well. We select the run date, so today's date, and a unique identification, like that. Click on enter. Now we need to choose the parameters. Over here we have the Dunning date. This Dunning date serves two purposes. First, it is the issue date of our Dunning letter. And also, it serves as the basis for calculating the days in arrears. Let's just say today's date. Documents posted up to. This is the date up to which invoices and open items are taken into account for our Dunning run. And here the posting date is the selection criteria. So we are talking about, if we look at the invoice, YFP03, we are talking about this date over here and not about the document date. Okay, let's also say today's date. Then we select the company code and then we restrict our Dunning run for our specific customer over here. By the way, we could also done suppliers even though normally suppliers are not done. In the free selection tab, we could even filter via certain fields. However, this is not necessary as of now. And then here in the additional log, we will also state our customer. I would always advise you to select the additional log as well. Now we click on save. You can see the details have been saved. Let's go to the status and over here we can now click on schedule. You can see a small window appeared. Here we can select the start time and date or we can say start immediately and then in the printout we could say Dunning print with scheduling already but I would not advise you to do so because in the end when the system processes the Dunning run we can still manually edit a Dunning run. However, if we click on Dunning print with scheduling, then the print is immediately being processed. So I would not advise you to set this. Let's click on dispatch. You can see the job is now running and you can see one Dunning notice generated of which one are to be sent. Before we now print our Dunning notice, some more remarks. 
you already know how the open items for Dunning are determined. However, now let's talk about the processing of the items themselves. So you can see here, once the Dunning program has determined which open items are to be done, it processes each account as follows. Does the customer or vendor have a debit balance with regard to overdue items and all items? So meaning that we could even have a business partner with whom we interact in both directions. So it could say that we have like 10,000, let's say euro that we want from our customer. However, on the vendor side, we are owing the vendor who is also our customer 15,000. So this would mean that in the end, he must pay us 10,000, but we must pay 15,000. So this means that we would have a debit balance and we can't just simply done this business partner. This would be this point over here. Then the next one, do the total dining amount and the share of all open items exceed the minimum amount and the percentage limit of the dining level of the dining procedure. So this means that in the dining customizing, we can actually say that if the open items of our customer have a total amount of let's say 10 euro, then we won't done this customer only if the value is 11 euro or more. And last but not least, you can see here, has the dining level of the account or the overdue items increased since the last dining run? If not, are there any new open items that need to be done? And if even this is not the case, then the question is if there is a repetition of the dining notice specified in the dining procedure for this level. So this means that in the end, if the dining level has not increased, let's say our customer has already set dining level one, since the last dining run and the dining level did not increase yet. And also there are no new items to be done. So we are just talking about items that have already been done. And also there is not set in customizing for this dining procedure that a new dining notice should be sent even though the dining level did not increase. Then this account will not be done in the end. Okay, after all these checks, this account will be released for dining and the next account is checked in the same way and so on. So far so good. We can always inspect here the log and here you can see what the system has done in the end and what the system has checked. This is also important to look for errors. And now we can actually say Dunning printout over here. Now we say it's okay, start immediately. You need to select an output device and then press on print. You can see Dunning job was scheduled successfully. You can now see over here one Dunning notice printed. And now you may ask yourself where we can inspect this Dunning notice. Therefore we navigate to slash O SP01. Just click on execute. And then you can see over here, this is our spool that was generated. You can click here on subscript. In my instance, it could also be for sure PDF document via Adobe document service and so on. And here you can inspect the Dunning notice. This marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.